Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to be showing this uh, brain-based login demo and I'm not using, I don't have the actual device, I just have this uh, this brainwave data that we've been training on using an SVM or uh, creating an SVM from. Uh, but I made this interface basically a, a web web-based interface for us to replay some of the data um, that we've um, some of the brainwave data basically from from different people. So what I have here, just a really quick explanation. Um, first off, a place to enter your username. And the username is, well, basically used uh, to auth help with the authentication process. So first off, um, if we are using, for example, a multi-class SVM, uh, then we're using a username to make sure that whatever we predict is actually um, uh, is actually what the username should be, right? And uh, in the in the one class SVM, we're using the username to load the one class model. So um, really, what we could do, we could. I was thinking about adding another example uh, where we're just using a multi class SVM to log in as a user without uh, entering a username. You just detect who the user is based on their brainwave patterns, and that actually works. Um, but in this case, the username kind of acts as another uh, layer um, of check, essentially. So you have to know the username and you have to have the actual brainwave data. Uh, with the one class, so um, let me let me just explain here. Right now, this multi-class SVM, I have two users. Uh, one I call G1, one I'll call G2, uh, T1. And this data was shared by the group um, uh, I forget which folder it was in, but I just renamed it to G1 and T1, basically. Um, and I have a bunch of training. Uh, I basically combined all of the different uh, brainwave data from both G1 and T1 and made uh, test sets. And then I pulled out of those tests. Uh, the, the, sorry, I made training sets. I pulled out of the training sets. Um, uh, these two test sets, so basically smaller versions, uh, single instances, um, each of them are yeah, just tests. Let, let me see if I can actually find an example of it. Uh, what was it called? So I'm looking at G1, G1 test scale. So yeah, I only have the scaled data here, but basically the scaled data looks like this. So it's scaled between essentially um, negative one and one. Uh, so we collected the data directly from the um, emotive brainwave device. Then uh, I put it in the kind of SVM format. Uh, then I scaled that data and then I trained the model. Um, on the multi-class model, uh, I combined the T1 data and the G1 data training data. Um, and I made basically T1 to uh, return as a predicted value of one, or uh, predicts a class of one, and G1 predicts a class of two. So T1 predicts a class of one, G1 predicts a class of two, and then I have this uh, these samples from G1 and T1, uh, from basically the G data set and the T data set, that were not included in the training data. Okay, so with the multi-class SVM, we're basically using the brainwave data to classify who this person, who this user is. Um, and basically the way this works is you enter your username. So let's say the username is Meteor. Okay, so I can just type in Meteor. And then um, if you click on not train one, then it uses the, the brainwave data from one sample basically one sample of brainwave data that was not included in the training data. Okay, so whenever you click it, the SVM is now classifying all of that data, uh, and then we'll eventually hopefully get some data out, or, uh, well, not data out, we will actually log in based on whatever is returned. So it's gonna take a while, you can see that it's working right now, because it's currently doing the classification of all of this not train one data set, right? So um, yeah, right now it does take a while. So hopefully that will go. Okay, yeah, so you say success, logged in as user meteor with brainwave data. So we have the user media, uh, meteor, and we have the uh, brainwave data, so we classified it properly. So let's try that again. If we do, instead of meteor, right now I have two users, meteor and Roomba. If I type in Roomba, sorry, if I type in uh, any any random name, it will just fail. So if I type in Roomba, 
and then I click on, uh, let's say, the, one of the Meteor training sets. Again, it's going to take a while to, to classify everything, uh, but instead of successfully logging in, it will fail because the SVM, especially for the multi-class, actually performs really, really well uh, in terms of classifying the brainwave data that we have. Um, I should say that the brainwave data that I collected, I focused on um, basically uh, beta high and beta low and um, all of the, the channels that we had. So all of the basically beta high, beta low on each channel. And I just classified them all. Okay, so we typed in Roomba. So we were trying with Roomba, but this training data was classified um, uh, using the SVM as Meteor, right? So uh, basically we can say it's detected, okay? so. In this case, we're using the same model, whether we're for for basically every user. So every user, um, every user's information is added to the model, and then we can classify the users using a single model. Now, of course, if you have a lot of users, that's going to be a potentially a problem because I'm not sure how well an SVM would work if you were trying to classify, you know, thousands of people. So what I think we needed to use instead is a one-class SVM for each user. And a one-class SVM, uh, basically I'm, I'm trying to say, okay, is this user Meteor? Yes or no. Is this user Roomba? Yes or no, right? So one class, we either get a, a class value of one, which means yes, basically, or negative one, which means no, basically, okay? So if I give Roomba's data or any other random data to the Meteor uh, model, then it should get a negative one. Right? But if I give Meteor's data to a Meteor model, it should get a positive one, okay? And both of these are working. So again, if I do, let's say, let's change it up a little bit. If I do Meteor user, so Meteor user, and I'm using the Roomba data, then that means that I'm gonna load the Meteor model and I'm gonna compare it or I'm gonna classify using, uh, uh, sorry, sorry. If I type in Meteor, yes, then I'm going to um, load the Meteor model because it gets the the, uh, the model from the username that you type in, and then I'm gonna feed it Roomba data, right? So this is like the Roomba user putting on the headset, but they type in the Meteor username. So if we try that. And um, at first I had a little bit of problem uh, classific uh, classifying uh, with one class SVMs. They just uh, didn't really have very good performance. Um, oh. I lowered the, sorry, that was my calendar. I lowered the um, uh, the new value. Okay, so here we, we tried to log in as Meteor, but other data was detected. So using the one class SVM, I had not very good performance until I lowered the new value, and then I started to get really good performance. Um, I'm basically, once I do a bunch of classification over all the data, I start to uh, average the data. So that's it. I'm gonna push this to uh, GitHub, and we'll talk a little bit more about it in a second. Thanks.